pay attention, go through this, and here we go. So last class period, ladies and gentlemen, what we discussed was graphing in slope-intercept form. Um, slope-intercept form, remember, was when we had the equation y equals mx plus b. And the reason why slope-intercept was Slope intercept form was so nice to graph a line was because what we figured out when we were doing our table of values, we we chose, you know, a whole table. And we had to fill in that table and plot all those points. And it was kind of a lot of work to graph a function, right? You had to evaluate each and every one of those points, plug it in, and determine them. And but what we determined, what we found out was when graphing a line, we don't need to do always have to do table values. All we need is two points, and we can connect those two points. So what we used with slope-intercept form, what was so nice is we could immediately determine the y-intercept, which was where the graph crossed the y-axis. Then to find the next point, we used the slope, which we always rewrote as a fraction so we could determine the rise over run or the change in the y-coordinates over the change in the x-coordinates to find two points. Once we found those two points, we connected. So the problem we have here is we have an equation that is not in slope-intercept form. It is in what we call um, standard form. And standard form is in the form ax plus by equals c. So the first way we're going to learn how to graph an equation in standard form is to rewrite it so it's in slope-intercept form. Now, this is actually not as foreign as you guys uh, may think, because we practice these problems when we are doing solving linear equi literal equations. So I know you guys see a lot of fractions. Yes, you can get rid of fractions. But guys, we don't have to be so scared of fractions. They're just numbers like all the other numbers. You should treat them equally, right? Fairness and kindness. So we look at our variable y, and we see what is happening to our variable y. Our variable y is being multiplied by the fraction negative 2 thirds. It's also being added by 1 third x. Got that? It's added because that's positive. So we always undo addition and subtraction, right? We're not doing it. The reason I circled the y is to pin it there. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not moving the y. I'm just going to undo what's happening to it. So the first thing I'm going to undo is the addition of 1 third x. So I subtract 1 third x on both sides. That now leaves me with negative 2 thirds y equals. Now, when we subtract these, remember, these are not like terms, so you can't subtract them. But I want to rewrite this in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 1 3rd x plus 3. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Everybody follow me? Mm -hmm. OK. So now what we need to do is, again, we need to look at our y and say, all right, now what is happening to my variable? Well, my variable is being multiplied by negative 2 thirds. So to undo multiplying by negative 2 thirds, we need to divide by negative 2 thirds, right? But we don't divide fractions. Instead of dividing fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. So I multiply by negative 3 halves on both sides. Now, it's very important. The way that I have this written right now, this is just 3 times negative 1 third. You got to make sure you multiply both of these terms. So I'm going to represent that with parentheses. Anytime you have a fraction multiplied by a reciprocal, that goes to 1 which is just leaving me with y equals negative 1 third times negative 3 halves plus 3 times negative 3 halves. Does everybody see how I applied the distributive property there? Even if you were to divide this, you would have to divide both of those by that term. So now, when I multiply fractions, I just multiply straight across. So my final answer is y equals positive 3 sixths, oops, that's an x right there. 3 6 x plus, this becomes a negative 9 halves. Cool? Rewrite this as y equals 1 half x minus, this um, be reduced to, let's do negative 4.5. Or really, let's, uh, or negative 9 halves. Just leave it like that as a fraction. So how do we go ahead and graph this now? So again, ladies and gentlemen, this is my y-intercept. As I mentioned, this is where the graph crosses the y-axis. So it's going to be here. I still see people going on the x-axis. right? We've got to go on the y-axis. So remember, the y, all this is, the y-axis, is a number line. 
Now, you need to know that negative 9, uh, 9 halves is the same thing as negative 4.5, which as a coordinate point is 0, negative 4.5. So that's going to be halfway between negative 4 and negative 5. Then I use the slope, which is the change in y, which is 1. So I'm going to go up 1. And the change in the x value is 2. So now I go on the x value, the x-axis, over two units, 1, 2. Do you guys see how I created that? So when I go up, I go to negative 3.5, and then I go over two units. And that's my next point. Then I have two points, and I connect. OK? Question? That's fine, but you still need to know where negative 9 halves lies as a point in your integers. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, it's hard to d deal with. See, slope, we always want to deal with a fraction. Because when we're dealing with slope as a fraction, we know the rise of a run. How far up or down to go, how far left or right to go. But as a y-intercept, that's a value. So we want to know exactly what that value is. That's why I convert it to a decimal, so I know I could have to go down to negative 4.5. I will tell you on your work, you're not going to have any fractions that you're going to have to convert to decimals. Okay? It just ended up this problem that I chose has that, but you will not have to deal with that. Yeah, real quick. <laughs>